And uh, now we're going to turn it back towards the desk. We've got four football players from your Centennial Cougars. Connor Zolt, Carter Anderson, Austin Flashen. Flushing. Flushing. You get, see, I should have gone with I what John said. And Timothy O'Neill Jr. Welcome to the show, fellas. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, our announcers have been saying it right. I don't know. I just panicked. Sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time. All right, so uh, you guys also made a trip to the state tournament, and it, it had been a while yeah. for the school to make it to, uh, to the tournament. So uh, tell us what that uh, feeling was like, uh, Connor, when you guys uh, were able to grab the hardware and know you were going to state. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, that game, it was against Edina. We took it to overtime, and they scored. Uh, and they were going for two points to uh, win it. And we stuffed them on the goal line. Everyone ran out on the field. It, it was amazing. So you. Uh Go ahead. How much confidence did you have going into that game? That's a team that you played earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, you didn't get the win there. I think there were feelings that that was a winnable game in the opener. Uh, so how confident were you going into this rematch? Oh, we, got, we got better every game. We, we didn't play our best right away in the season, but we improved all year, and I was pretty confident going into that one. So uh, you guys were also probably aware of uh, the meeting a few years prior to that. Mm -hmm. uh, which also was the same scenario at Centennial, and the winner would have gone to state, and it went down to the last play. So uh, was that in anybody's minds, A, going into the game, and B, on the final play of the game, <laughs> knowing that uh, that play was, was going to determine the outcome once again? Uh, yeah, it, everyone had flashbacks at that point, but our defense came through and got it for us, a, re a revenge game. It was awesome. So Carter, uh, bittersweet game for you and moment for you as you catch, uh, I think it was like a 54-yard touchdown, uh, whatever it was. And so on that play, tackled in the end zone. And uh, tell us what happened on that play. Um, my leg got caught under the dude and it just snapped. But like, <laughs> at first I thought I just like twisted my ankle. So I was like, just taking like some deep breaths. I was like, all right, I'm gonna get back up. And then like I sat up and I was like, no, nah, it's gone. It's, it's broke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so broken ankle, broken leg, what is it? Ah, fibula, and then I dislocated Ooh. my ankle. So what's, uh, how long are you out for? Uh, three months so I can start walking again. So depends on three that. Three months before you can start walking? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So that's the basketball season right there? Yeah, hoops is gone, yeah. Oh man, so that was, that was, uh, that was a yay turned into, oh no, oh no moment for I think everybody watching yeah. uh, and obviously for yourself and for your teammates. Um, I mean, the, I guess the bright spot there is uh, a necessary touchdown for the team to win there, yeah. but uh, very tragic end of the play for sure. So you're, you've, been, uh, you've been a key member of the basketball team. Have you committed to any school uh, for basketball? Uh, I mean, for a while, I didn't really know if I was going to do basketball or football. And then this season, I started leaning towards football. And then with breaking my leg, it's like guaranteed now. So I'll figure out where I'm going to go soon and go from there. With okay. football being the sport that you were leaning towards, you're on an offense that doesn't pass it a ton necessarily. Uh, you're obviously a very talented wide receiver. We can see that when the ball does go your way. Is it tough maybe to know that you know, there's only what, roughly three catches a game or something that you were getting, but in a more pass-heavy offense, you would have been featured a lot more? Uh, I wouldn't rather play for anybody else. I like the way that it was. I mean, at first, when I was like younger and more immature, I kind of got really pissy about it. But then I kind of just trusted my guys, kind of fell in love with blocking. It came a good time. Winning's pretty fun, right? Yeah, yeah winning okay. games is always better. So. <laughs> and if you can get like four catches for 130 yards and two scores, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Just you know, make the best of what you get. Yeah. I think I think the offense worked pretty well. I, the offense certainly changed when when Carter was out of the game um, for that second half uh, against Edina. Um, leaned a lot, even more on the rushing, um, trying to gain more yards. It seemed like first and second down, not to be in that third and long situation where Carter's. Um, Carter's such a weapon. Um, so moving to both running backs and defense with uh, Austin and Timothy, um, your, your guys is, you guys have been you know starters on defense all year long, and then you guys seem like you guys got more and more use on offense as, as the year went on. Uh, we'll start with uh, um, Austin. Tell us what that transition was like as far as uh, 
as the season progressed, like the, the way that you guys were used? It was a fun transition. It was kind of hard at the beginning of the season, playing both ways, especially in the heat right away, and got tired fast, but we got used to it. And what about you, Tim? Yeah, after the first couple of games, it got a lot easier, and this was a lot of fun. All right, so uh, going back to the Edina game, um, it seemed real, uh, real evident that the defense was going to have to make uh, a number of stops there, especially in the fourth quarter and overtime. Uh, feeling on the field uh, with the defense, Austin, as, uh, as Edina gets the ball in overtime there. I was just mainly excited, ready to stop them and get the win, but I wasn't as ner nervous as I thought I was going to be, and we just we all kept our cool and we played our ball. So before we get to OT, Tim, there's uh, like a hitch and go. They connected on their big guy with, and then uh, they tried one more time, and uh, it seemed like you recovered quick enough to knock that ball away. Tell us what that moment was like. Yeah, it was crazy. I trusted my skills, and I got the job done. So, Or did you know that play was coming? Yeah. We, yeah. All right, so uh, then we go to OT. You guys make the big stop on the two-point conversion. And uh, a lot of drama being able to build up there with the timeout. And, uh, and uh, tell us what that moment, uh, starting with you, Austin, as uh, you guys, did you know what play to expect? Or they, they kind of seemed like they were going to the same, uh, basically running up the middle with. Uh, Bunce. Yeah, Bunce. That's, so he was obviously a force to be reckoned with. So tell us, uh, <laughs> did you guys think it was going to him on the last play? Yeah, we knew it was going to go to him. They've been running the same thing all year right behind there. They got an offensive tackle that's a D1 guy, pretty good. And we knew what was coming, and we knew we had to stop it, so we stepped up. Yeah, same thing. We knew they were going to give it to the guy they'd been going to all game, and we were ready, and we stopped it. So you guys made sure you had gap integrity there? Yep. All right. How exciting is it to end the game on a defensive play like that? I mean, because a lot of times a win or the biggest play that sometimes people remember is a touchdown. But instead it was you guys stopping them from getting into the end zone. What was that feeling like to know that you, know, you were the ones that closed it out? Yeah, that was crazy. We... Yeah, it was great. It happened in uh, the Champlain game, too. We stopped them on a two-point. Also, same, same kind of scenario. You guys played a lot of close games this year. I think you had... Uh, maybe eight games that were decided by eight points or less, something like that, essentially a touchdown. Uh, did that build confidence that you were playing in close games throughout the course of the year and winning most of them? Yeah, we had a tough schedule. We knew that coming into the year, and we knew that we had to execute, and we got it done. Yeah, and a shutout versus St. Michael Albertville. That was impressive. Um, so, uh, Connor, was it academic all state that you got? Yeah. So you're a smart guy. I guess. All right, I guess. Claims to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metro North uh, Offensive Player of the Year. Uh -huh. All right, any other awards that you guys? Probably all conference for you guys. Probably. Yeah. Um, Can keep track. Any, uh, so Carter's out. Any other winter sports for you guys? No. Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Wrestling? Yeah. All right, spring sports for you guys? Maybe track. We'll okay. See. Yeah. All right, use that speed. Yeah. All right. Well, a lot of fun to watch you guys uh, this season. Congratulations on making the state tournament. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thanks thank for you. having us. OK, now we are going to take another break. Uh, we'll be back with, uh, we got two more sets of guests. Yeah, we're like 2 thirds of the way through the show. Man, you are good with math today. I got to hand it Nailing to you. Nailing it. All right, we'll be right back.